I understood why Anders was nervous, because this project could really give our company a great start. I felt that they were going to answer like, whoa, you are expensive, I'm never going to work with you. It was a budget that let us be creative and that let us play around uh, with some stuff that came out really cool. So they liked the project, they liked the film. We got the money and it was time to buy some equipment. We all had our own cameras. We used my, my GH4 for shooting this commercial. This was our next big step as a production company. Okay, we are sending our first uh, invoice. 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 So we had a bit of money to spare and we thought it would be a good investment to buy a camera. And I remember Anders was talking a lot about the red camera, I think the red scarlet, the, the cheaper options of the red cameras. And I was not completely sold about it because, you know, red has, you know, you can pay, X amount of dollars for the body, but then you need to have the special uh, sort of the memory cards and things that can cost like two thousand dollars for one one of the cards. So I thought maybe we could go for an option which is a little bit more sensible for these kind of productions that we are doing, which would be more documentary style things and smaller productions. So we were kind of Panasonic people. We had a GH4, GH5. Panasonic was the thing. So I, I searched for Panasonic, and at that time, Eva One came out. And I was actually leaning toward the Canon C200. But I think uh, Anders, once he, he saw that even one camera, I think he sort of fell in love with it. And it also said that with Shogun Inferno, we can record ProRes RAW, 5.7K. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds awesome. We're outside Scandinavian Photo, they haven't okay. opened yet, but <laughs> we've been standing here. We slept here tonight, just yeah. to be sure to get our hands on Eva. Yeah. <laughs> Is it really a good idea to spend all the money on a camera? We could have seven months of office rent for that money. Yeah! So that was like the, a big milestone. The first camera that our production company could buy for their own money. It was not us as freelancers, but it was the production company buying this equipment. All right, what's done is done. Hopefully it's something special about this one. So far so good, very exciting. Hello guys, <laughs> welcome to this new video. Now we're walking down to the train station. I should have been there. Jesus. Oi. Uh, Anders has been in love with the GH4 for, for a lot of years, so for this to take the place of the GH4, it had to be really special. So Eva was his new lover. His new best friend. A big benefit with EVA 1 is that it has a built-in ND. This makes it so easy to adjust exposure on the go. <laughs> we felt we had everything we needed now, except an office. I was sitting in the office, but it was really, really small. They were, and the air was really, the air wasn't good, and yeah. And some After Effects presets from Nikolai. <sighs> I actually enjoyed that office. Yes, it was narrow, and of course the Dimitri didn't fit in it, but it was cheap. Of course the Dimitri didn't fit in it. Did he call me fat or big? It's a big difference. We 
we didn't want to rush getting an office because when we signed an office contract, you have to sit together for several years. So we didn't actually know if that was going to work out or if we were going to become uh, unfriendly with each other. So uh, we tried out different social arrangements and <laughs> different social activities to see if we could, uh, yeah, get closer. So then we're headed to a boys trip to Amsterdam. This was going to be so much fun. Nico actually thought it was a proper boys trip to Amsterdam. Bring beers, and party, and but Marius, Anders, and I, we were we were gonna watch cameras. You know, it's such a fun thing to just walk around watching cameras all day. We got cameras here in Norway. We got lots of cameras everywhere in Oslo. Why go all the way to Amsterdam? So I think Nico was a bit disappointed. But we had a great time anyway. We met Georgie from Cinecom. Uh, we went to this uh, boat trip with Aperture and Ted Sim, as you probably know from Aperture. I don't know, but he's a really cool guy. And Victor Bart, of course. Just before we went to IBC, we made a little music video. This was for a Panasonic EVA 1 contest. Panasonic had this contest. If you have an EVA 1, uh, make something and you can win uh, 5,000 euros. Nice, Thomas. Blink it. When we went down to IBC, they announced the winners, and we won. <laughs> we won with the music video, with the EVA And since we won the contest, then we were able to meet with Panasonic, and Panasonic are friends with Adamas, and then Adamas invited us for dinner, so we could also be their friends, which is huge for us. And I thought this was a good opportunity to really uh, talk about the production company and, and show who we are. I was the responsible for uh, for the, the time and I wrote it on the wrong day. Thanks, Anders. Yeah, the, the Atmos taco incident, that was horrible. You know, I love tacos. I love tacos more than anything. And I when I first eat tacos, I eat a lot of tacos. So on Friday, we went to this taco place. We were eating a lot of tacos. It was just a coincidence. I went to my phone and I had re uh, received an email that said, remember the dinner tonight with Atomus. And I was like, tonight? Isn't it tomorrow? So I was so full. I've never been that full in a long time. Eight o'clock. Checked my watch. It was 7.50 p.m. We have to go now. The dinner is now. beautiful buffet and it was free food you know it's a dream situation but I was full of tacos basically just skipped the main food and went straight for dessert and ate ice cream instead <laughs> yeah it was just a, a very weird experience but it, it was a great uh, talking to Atmos and all the other people at at that party it's so the people who make the camera right the guys who are in there every day it's so funny how one thing leads to another. These Norwegian uh, journalists were sitting next to us. And they were talking about these uh, Norwegians who won a Panasonic contest at the IBC. And they were like, is that you? They were like, I think so. <laughs> and suddenly we were sitting there next to the journalist from Norway. And when we came back home to Norway, they wrote an article about us. What a great start. It was like, this just shows us that go out there and join stuff. Join camera exhibitions and do filmmaking and participate in contests. This was a chance to spread the word about us. We need a way to people go in and click and see what we do. Now we had to quickly make a showreel, business cards and a homepage to attract new clients. The idea behind the showreel was of course to impress people with what we've already done and get to know us a little better as persons. As a company. The showreel was a horrible experience. Um, <clears throat> sorry. 
<laughs> Dog. <laughs> Fuck us. I, I think I gave out business card to almost every person I met. It was our huge chance to not make a fool of ourselves. And we made a fool of ourselves. We still need an office. Almost 3,000 grand a month. I think we need more clients. It was perfect. The more we thought about it, the better it was.